Hello everyone, in response to the previous video I made concerning the rocket sled, people suggested that I should change the timing of the Rato motors to either before or after the decoupling of the space planes from the rocket sled. So uh, right now I have it as at the same time, so the Rato motors fire just in the same split second, in the same physics frame as the rocket sled mount detaches from the plane. Uh, but we could have it before or after. Uh, so the Rados firing after was Pekka's suggestion and the Rados firing before was uh, somebody else's, I forget the name. So those were the two suggestions. Let me show you what the script actually looks like right now. So the first thing it checks for is where we are in altitude and once it gets to that altitude it fires the engines on the back of the carrier plane because they have to spool up first. So we need the engines going and then it switches to mode 2 and it checks for the thrust, total thrust, so this would be both the thrust from the engines on the back of the carrier plane plus the thrust of the boosters on the rocket sled and it waits until that gets below a certain amount because the boosters have a thrust tail off and this is the right amount so that the retro boosters on the rocket sled can push it back properly and so at that point it uh, toggles the little clamps on the side of the of the what you call it uh, the thing that attaches to the carrier plane it then stages the decoupler for the clamp on the carrier plane and here I've now got it waiting 0.2 seconds it'll be more than a physics frame like that and then hitting the radios so this would be Pekka's version this is when the radios go after the staging of the decoupler. So then it switches the mission phase and clears the dialogue and we get to this where it just straight up pulls up on the pitch all the way. So all the way, all the time it's just trying to pull up. It's, it's never trying to moderate that until it gets to 1800 meters. At that point it neutralizes the control. So we could change that but I haven't super duper found that we needed to change that. And with the radio motors, we should, you know, go up sufficiently so it doesn't hit its tail. Of course, that depends. So anyway, these are the parameters that we have right now. So let us retract the arms, close the door and release it onto the ramp because KOS itself cannot release it onto the ramp. I have found that out the hard way. One of the quirks about this is, if KOS tries to do that staging to release the rocket sled onto the ramp, the rocket sled will always clip into the ramp. It will not... the colliders won't work. Why? Why is it that when KOS does it, the colliders won't work? 100% of the time when I do it, the colliders work. 100% of the time when KOS does it, the colliders don't work. So, yeah. Mm, if you're wondering whether all this is, you know, going to work out perfectly, this is one of those things. So, I mean, it's possible if I manually control the darn thing, that it would work better than if KOS was controlling it. I'll let you pause and think about that, but it does require it, very good timing on my part, so that's the problem. So, in my case, it's going to hurt because my timing is not that good. In the case of KOS, it's just because of randomness. So, I'm putting the new stuff in. So, with the staging of the radios separate... Oh, I have them first right now. Um, we'll do the pick away first. I have more faith in firing the radios first rather than second, but we'll see. Now, I actually dropped the HUD because I don't want it taking extra effort displaying that stuff. So, I mean, I don't know if it makes any difference at all, but just in case. Of course, this is how I'm gonna record it anyway. This is how I want to do it, without the HUD up. Well, 
in this case it didn't fire those at all well that that might be a flaw on my part but it looks like you remember i put the ablative uh fins at the bottom or ventral fins those apparently worked so yeah those little space plane wings saved our actual body flaps this time yep nothing else happened so okay but the, these didn't fire at all so uh what what probably happened and i always revert to space plane hanger by the way what probably happened is we changed something here uh, it must have because because they switch or maybe it's just because i switched it up on the fly because it should still stage this how did it get to setting the mission phase without doing that? I don't know. Let's just do it in here first. So after. That's a lot more balanced than usual. And the script does go into the upper space plane, by the way, because after decoupling, it would be bad if it didn't know what to do. Oh no, it did it. Oh, I forgot to do that. See? Every time. Every time. <laughs> okay, off we go. They still didn't light. <laughs> this time there was no knock of it at all. What do we do with this information? Oh, why is it paused? Okay, it was paused for quite a long time. Maybe something happened with the rocket sled. It is supposed to stay on the ramp. And slide back down, by the way. They certainly did not fire. It wasn't just that we didn't see the plumes. They never staged that. And so it says stage. Well, it's weird that it's working out great without them doing anything. But okay, let's, let's reconsider the structure of the script. So, okay, it's trying to skip ahead. And, you know, we set mission phase to one here. Let me, let me stage and wait. 0.5 or something. I don't know if there's a way to check exactly if those are firing. Possibly. Probably. But I'm not going to put it in just yet. We could just have them as an action group. It might be easier to have them fire ahead of time. But we'll try this, having it wait before it changes the mission phase. But really it should actually be hitting that stage first. Um, maybe we can just set them to an action group instead of staging them. We do have a limit on our action groups here. Maybe zero will be fine. Let's see, I think... Okay, three is unoccupied. That'll be nicer. Activate engine. So, we won't even put them in the normal flow of things. We'll just sort of leave them higher up. So they don't get in the way. Okay. Okay, well, this time they fired. We lost the ventral fins, but we kept the body flap. Still don't want things to explode, but there we are.
Well, three in a row when where it didn't actually go haywire, so that's good. Let's try it with the situation reversed, with us firing the Ratos first and then going ahead with the decoupling. I mean, the problem is I don't know whether it'll work the same later on, <laughs> so it, it even worked without the Ratos firing at all, so what do we make of this? I don't think the Rados firing seem to make much of a difference. They are rather powerful because they're short-lived. They are modeled on a real booster. Uh, I think they were. The, there's a small boosters on one of those Japanese solid rockets. Um, it only lasts like six seconds or something like that. Those boosters. I think it was like the Lambda rocket, Lambda 4S rocket, something like that. And then we have. Uh, 12 of them on each side, so it's quite a lot. Okay, let's see how it goes with firing the radios ahead of time. Well, that seems nicer. Let's see if we can get it three times in a row. Since they are modeled after real boosters, they last for that amount of time, so... Okay, well, again, revert to space plane hangar, and we'll try it once again. And here we go again. Well, oh, okay, well, no, that's gonna mess it up. A little bit of randomness. But, yep, we got a random hiccup there. Well, let's see what happens. Ooh, yeah. Well, I don't blame that on the technique. It I had that issue earlier on. It didn't really hit the full height of the curve there, but we for once get to see the rocket sled staying on the ramp as it's supposed to with the retro rockets. I guess there's that. See if it goes all the way back. It's meant to go all the way back to the very beginning. Ooh, explosions of the space plane. Oh, 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 it had a hiccup. Uh, the, the whole platform bounced. Ah, uh, I didn't get all the way back. Random bounce of the platform, even though nothing is supposed to have caused that. But Okay, well, we'll just call that a fluke. That too happens. Wow, we have a lot more jiggle this time. We might have done too many attempts. Okay, here we go. Seems fine so far. A little bit of a tilt down, but still clear. So that's the second one in a row. We we are not counting the the fluke, but it actually tilted down. Remember, it's trying to pull up as hard as it can until 1,800 meters. So then, actually, even after that, it's still gonna try because it has to hit the pitch that it wants to hit. And in this case, 60 degrees is what it's trying for right now. So, okay, twice in a row, we'll say. All right, let's go. OK. 
Okay, seems fine. Oh, too much nose down. Oh boy. Well, we lost the ventral fins that time. You see? I mean, it, it, it but it was not clearing anything there. Tell you, there's just randomness. <laughs> there's just randomness. But I guess it's a little bit better with them going ahead of time. But I can't tell if that's totally consistent or whether we just had a good day. <laughs> that's how it is. I'll try and make use of it. I do want to do the rest of the 2001 Space Odyssey thing with it going to the station and everything. But, yeah. It's a struggle. Anyway, that has been the rocket sled testing. The rest of this is a fate accompli. It will manage to get the space plane to orbit and everything. There are other things I could test, but that's not for this video. So, the suggestions were good. I mean, we didn't have any ramp incidents, unlike the previous video, except for the one where there was a hiccup earlier. So, yeah, having it uh, separate from the staging event is probably the way to go. So, good. Thank you for the suggestions. And wrapping it up here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.